guys, welcome to Insight. I'm Paige Pierce, world champion professional archer and member of the United States archery team. I just want to start by saying that I know there are so many different ways to set up a bow and shoot a bow, and I am never going to say that my way is the only way or the best way. I simply want to teach you the tips and tricks that I have used to find success along the tournament trail. One of the most common questions that I get asked is, how many weights do you run on your sidebar? Where do you recommend that I run my weights? How should I run my bars to make my bow aim better? So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. One, stabilizer weights, and two, tips and tricks on how to actually make your bow aim better. So I want to start this off by saying that stabilizer weights and stabilizer position is 100% personalized. When someone messages me and they ask me how I'm running my weights on my bow, it's the equivalent of them messaging me and asking me my shoe size and them going to try that out for themselves. It doesn't work like that. So the first thing is, it doesn't matter how much weight I run or any other professional archers run. That is something that you have to figure out for yourself. Now the first thing that I want to talk about is how to make your bow aim better. Now people just assume that the only way to do that is your bars and your weights. That is not true. So beforehand, I take all of the weight off of my stabilizers and here's a few things that you want to try and test out. The first thing is your draw length. Okay? Your bow will aim drastically different if your draw length is too short, correct, or too long. Now the best way to try this is take all of the weights and all of the bars off your bow and draw your bow back and aim it. Now go ahead and adjust your draw length maybe a little bit shorter and do the same test. Make your drawing a little bit longer and test that again. What you may find is that one of those positions, your bow aims drastically better than the other two. Now it may be different than what you're used to shooting, but in the long run, that's going to give you a much more stable sight picture. Now that you have your drawing set and it's comfortable and you know that your bow aims very well at the drawing that you finished at, the next thing is cam timing. Now for myself, I shoot a dual cam bow with two stops and how you run those stops or how you run your cam timing will drastically change how your bow aims. I would start by running your cams where the stops hit the cables at the same time or even cam timing and aim your bow with maybe some weight, whatever, and see how it aims. Now what I would do is speed it up to where your top cam hits just a little bit before your bottom and test that. Then go the other way and try it with your bottom cam hitting a little bit first before your top cam and test that. I promise you that any bow is going to aim so much different with your top ahead, your stops hitting even, or your bottom hitting ahead. And what you want to do is pick the one out of those three that feels the best and aims the best for you. Before we move on to stabilizers and weights, the one last thing to consider is your form. If you're somebody that's asking, how do I improve my sight picture with weights, but your form looks like this? That is much more of a hindrance than your weights will ever be. So the first step is going to be fixing your form. Now I have a separate video that covers what your archery form needs to look like to be steady and repeatable. And until you have good bone to bone alignment with repeatable form, you are never going to aim at your best. So fix your form and once that's done, then worry about your stabilizers and your weights. So once all that's finished and you have the basics of your bow set up to where it aims good without bars and without weights, now you're going to go ahead and pick your bars. Now I would recommend just a standard setup of a 30 inch front bar and maybe a 12 inch back bar. If you're a smaller person, you can maybe drop down to like a 27 inch bar. If you're a big guy, then maybe like a 32 inch bar. So there are options, but I would say a 30 inch front and a 12 inch back bar is a really good place to start. Now again, that's all individualized. Once you have your bars on your bow, it's time to start adding weight. And this is the part where people ask, is there a certain ratio that works? What works well for you? And to be honest, it's different for everyone. And over the years, my weight ratio front to back has changed drastically. Um, some people run one back bar. Some people run a V bar off the back. That's going to change how your weights are distributed. And some people run more or less front weight. When I first started archery, back in the day, the way that everybody tended to run their bow was with a really light front weight and a ton of weight on their back bar. Over the years, I've actually changed and now I run more weight on my front bar than my back bar. Again, this is personal preference. Now the reason that I do that 
is I feel that more front weight actually is the only thing that really helps slow the movement of the bow when you get nervous or it's windy. There's so much down pull out on the front bar that the weight out front really slows the movement and that the weight out back doesn't do so much slowing the movement. All that's gonna do is help me keep my bubble centered. So I run as minimal weight on the back as possible just to keep my bubble centered and then I put most of my weight out on the front. Now right now I'm actually running 16 ounces on my front bar and only 5 or 6 ounces on my back bar. So I run a very, very heavy front weight ratio on my bars. Other people might run a couple weights up front and a ton in the back. So again, when you're asking people, hey, how much weight should I run, don't ask, just get out there and test it. Now just to demonstrate how personalized weights really are, I am a right-handed archer, but I'm actually running my back bar on the right side of my bow. Okay, that's not, that's not normal. But for me personally, for my hand grip and for my body, that is where I need the weight to keep my bubble level. There's no trick, there's no reason. The, again, the only reason I use the back bar is to make sure my bow stays level. And if I didn't have this on here, my bow would can't weigh this direction. So I added weight to the right side to help bring the bow back to center. That's one question I get asked all the time and people say, I wanna try that. Well, if your bubble is level with your bar on the left side, there is zero reason to try that. Again, this is something for me personally. Um, now next, how do you pick how high to run your stabilizer? You wanna know the answer? You test it, okay? When I test mine, you can see it's pointing up high right now. I usually start with one drastically high like this, one level, and one pointing down. And I'm gonna test it all three of those ways. Now usually one of the three is gonna feel a whole lot better than the other two. From there, I set it high and then I do minor adjustments just testing it back and forth. One thing I found and the reason on this setup why I'm running this bar high, one sight issue that I struggle with is the sight picture that drops out the bottom of the dot. Now I noticed that as I ran my bar lower that my bow felt lighter but I got bigger dip bangs out the bottom. As I took this back bar and I raised it up, my sight picture was maybe a little better overall, but the main change was that I wasn't getting those dip bangs anymore and it did feel heavier. So I was able to actually take weight off the back, move the bar up and essentially fix my aiming issue of dropping out the bottom. Now, there are some rule of thumbs. For example, if you're aiming out the bottom, add weight here or there. But again, it's so individualized that I don't even really like telling people those things because it could be different for everyone. One other important thing when you're setting up your stabilizers is where you're gonna run your back bar. How close is it gonna be to your bow or how far out is it going to be angled? Now, for me personally, I put a few ounces on the back to start and I'm gonna run my bar in or out depending on how my sight bubble looks. So for this, Part, I would have a second person there to help you and here's my advice. Take your bow, put the weights on it, draw your bow back and just before you hit full draw, close your eyes. Anchor and aim. Now that second person is going to stand there and they're actually going to look at your bubble in your sight to see if it's tilted one way or the other. Now let's say it's buried all the way to the left, that means you've got too much weight on this side of your bow. I would go ahead if I was a right-handed archer with my V bar on the correct side, and I would bring my bar a little bit out away from the bow. It's gonna magnify the weight on that side, which will tilt your bow from here to here. So what I use the back bars for is to make sure that my bow stays perfectly straight up and down, not tilted one way or the other. And one thing you'll notice is that that really does help improve your scores. If you're someone where you're fighting your bubble when you're at full draw to keep it in the center, it breaks down a lot of other parts of your shot. So I think this is the most critical piece of advice when you're actually setting up your stabilizers. Have someone look at your site, make sure that your back bars are set to where when you draw back and you relax and you're comfortable, that your bubble is centered in your housing. Now that I've went over the basic ways to set up your bow and how to start to set up your stabilizers, I really hope that that gives you a better idea. And again, this isn't something that understanding what any other pro tournament archer or hunter does is going to help you. This is something that if you really care about it, you need to go out there and put the time in and test it each and every way. 
Um, in the long run, it will make a really, really big difference on your performance. And obviously, everybody wants a staple sight picture. But don't assume that you can only do it with the weights. Don't forget the first tips on what to set up on your bow to help your whole bow aim better. And then you're going to use the weights to take out that little bit of movement at the end. I really hope this video helps you guys. And I hope you get out there and test this stuff for yourself. And good luck this season.